In this video, I'll show you how you can make EV look like cycles in four steps. I'm gonna teach you these steps by converting two example scenes from cycles to EV. The first one being the classic barbershop from agent three to seven. The first step is to adjust the render settings. Enable ambient occlusion, screen space reflections. You can disable half rest rays, but I don't really see a difference to it being turned on. For better shadows, toggle open the shadow settings and increase the cube and cascade sizes. This will increase the shadow resolution, so it will make the shadow sharper but it will come at the cost at higher RAM usage and longer render times. Then enable high bit depth, soft shadows and increase the samples in the sampling section. I found that for most cases 128 to 512 is fine, but sometimes you need more samples to get a clean image. The second step is to adjust the materials to be compatible with EV. So in this scene that means that I'll turn the blend mode for the windows to alpha blend and the shadows to none so that the light can just pass right through. For all the other glass materials in this scene I'll turn the blend mode to alpha blend and the shadow mode to alpha clip. You could turn both of these, the blend mode and shadow mode, to alpha hashed and that would be higher quality but it will take more samples to give a clean result. Then the third step is to replace all the light sources with lamps. But before that we need to disable the effect of the world lighting for everything except the camera. Because if we don't we will get a really flat image like you can see here. To do that go to the shading tab, switch the node editor type to world, then add in a light path node and use the is camera ray output to mix between the background and the transparency shader. For the windows and the scene I'll add an area lens but by default the shadows aren't really starting where they're supposed to start. So to fix that go into the settings of each of the lights and turn the bias to the lowest it goes and enable contact shadows. If you need to get rid of the reflections that the light creates you can go into the light settings and turn down the specular. The final step is to bake the reflections and indirect lighting. For that add in an irradiance volume and scale it so it covers the part of the scene that need indirect lighting. A thing you could do is make a low res irradiance volume to cover the entire scene and make a high res irradiance volume to cover the parts of the scene that are close to the camera. But my scene is small enough so I can get away with only one irradiance volume. For better reflections, add in a reflection cube map and again scale it to cover the parts of the scene that need reflections of objects that aren't currently visible to the camera. But I will just scale it up to cover the entire scene. Then to bake, go to the render settings, down to the indirect lighting and hit bake indirect lighting. At this time it's a good idea to open a reference image of how the scene would look if it were rendered in cycles so we can tweak the EV settings and the irradiance volume settings to better match the cycles render. In this case I found that the indirect lighting wasn't strong enough so I went into the irradiance volume setting and increased the intensity. After rebaking I think this is as close as I'm going to take this scene. I gave this scene a render and as you can see we got really close to the cycles render. Of course you could get this even closer by tweaking light strength and color. For the second scene it's basically the same but there are a lot more problems to fix. In the render settings nothing changed but we will have to spend a lot more time on the materials and lights. For the window I did the same as in the first scene, setting the blend mode to alpha blend and the shadow to none. For the walls you can see that the ambient occlusion is affecting a lot of areas that it shouldn't. The way to fix that is to remove the normal map and only use the displacement map for displacement. You might have to change the strength though. For the table it lost a lot of detail when switching to EV so to fix that I added a color ramp to the roughness map to make it a bit more contrasty and pull out a little more detail. And that kind of worked. But if you know how to properly fix this just write me a comment. Thank you. Now on to our lighting. In this scene we don't have to replace any light sources with lamps because every light source is already a lamp, but we do have to fix the color and shadows of the lamps, starting with the ones for the torches. To fix the color that was previously controlled by the light shader nodes that aren't supported in Eevee, I just went on a website that converts black body temperature to color and used that color as the lamp color. But I found to get the same color as in cycles, I had to go about 100 degrees colder than I had to be for the cycles. So instead of 1300 I used 1200. Sometimes you also have to increase the light strength to get the same effect as you got in cycles. For the light outside the window we still can see the effect as much as in cycles even though we have turned the shadow off for the window. Now you could increase the strength of that light and that would work but that isn't really the right way. I found that if you enable the custom distance option 
it fixed itself and had the same effect as in cycles. Of course, for every like, turn the bias down and enable contact shadows. So I'm currently editing this video and it occurred to me that I completely forgot to talk about how you can make volumetrics look good in Eevee. So I'll just explain it now. To make them look good, go into the render settings, toggle open the volumetric section and turn the tile size to the lowest your computer can handle. Check volumetric shadows. And the most important thing, adjust the start and end points so that they have the least distance to each other while not cutting off the volumetrics. Because if I, for example, would change the end point to 0.5 meters, I would not see any volumetrics because all the volumetrics are farther away than half a meter. So in my case, I can use 0.1 meters for the start point and seven meters for the end point. And as you can see, that truly makes a massive difference. But now back to the actual video. Then the light baking step didn't change for this scene, but make sure to open a reference image of how the scene looked in cycles so you can tweak the different settings like the intensity and the irradiance volume. In this scene I had to turn it way up. Also don't forget to rebake after tweaking the settings. Now with the lighting bake the second scene is done too so I'll give that a render. As you can see we didn't get as close to cycles as last time but with further tweaking you could certainly get there. But that was it for this video. If it helped you at all please like and subscribe.